I can't believe another Universal Yums unboxing, and this time we're traveling to France. Which is very exciting because we want to visit France. Yes. French is the language of love. We have some fun snacks here. A quick recap. If you haven't seen our other Universal Yums videos, we have a playlist. I'll link it up above. But basically, we've traveled to many countries and tried many snacks. It is a monthly subscription box. It is 14 bucks a month, which is the option we pick. There are other options. You can get more snacks. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the $14 a month option is awesome for the amount of snacks you get. The other boxes, would, the video will be two, hour, two hours long. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's already yeah. long enough. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe. It'll definitely help out our channel. And uh, let's eat some snacks. So the first snack we have is called Brett's A Formage du Cura, which is floral cheese flavored potato chips. Did you know the average French person eats 60 pounds of cheese per year? It sounds like a lot, but they have an incredible number of different varieties to try. 1,600 to be exact. Wow. For this chip, we'll just focus on one variety. Com Comte? Oh, okay. How do you say that? Comte? Uh, yeah. Comte. A sweet floral cheese from the Franche Comte province in eastern France. To make the cheese, every cow is treated to two full acres of pastures to roam, plus a diet of 100% natural food. Their fresh milk is immediately rushed to the production site, where it's crafted into cheese wheels and then matured for at least four months. The result? An incredibly distinctive, delicious cheese. One bite of these chips and you might find yourself wishing for 60 pounds worth. These are like ruffle style chips. Okay, cheers. That tastes just like Ruffles. I'm getting more potato then. This tastes like Ruffles plain chips. Yeah. I don't even... Maybe now at the very end I'm getting a hint of cheese, but... It's not very obvious. No. It tastes kind of like it's plain. It more than... It smells smell like... It. smells more than it tastes. Yeah. It tastes like plain chip. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not tasting that much cheese. I mean, the chips it's are good. good which but is... it smells... Stinkier, I guess. I know, but I want the I want the taste to be what the smell is. Right. Like Ruffles has a sour cream. I think it's like sour cream and cheddar flavor. It's so good. So next up, we got Truffles Bar by Mathies. Mathes Cocoa Dusted Truffles. Now this box was outside for a little bit when we first got it and i can feel that it's a little distorted oh yeah so it might be a little messed up uh -huh. according to legend this yum came about completely by accident in the 1920s confectioner auguste escoffier was making a pastry cream when he accidentally poured hot cream into a bowl of chocolate instead of a bowl of sugar and eggs rather than bidding the melty chocolate adieu he began experimenting he quickly realized the chocolate paste called ganache could be molded so he rolled it into balls but he couldn't just leave the gooey balls like that so he coated them in cocoa powder the result a delicious chocolate ball that looked like a whole lot of francis mushroom truffles hence the name that's why they're called truffles because they look like truffles i never understood that i thought i always wow. thought it had something to do with it but okay now it makes sense yeah we can't think of a more delicious accident oh so again these are gonna be a little melted so they're not gonna look probably like balls <laughs> yeah uh -oh. oh no. <laughs> it looks like a giant just blob. Cheers. Wow. Still good. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Wow. That's really good. We don't even like like chocolate that That's... much. And this is like chocolate chocolate, but like in a very decadent. Creamy. Creamy way. Yeah. I didn't think I would like this that much. This is really good. There's like a coldness to it somehow, but like that's more of a flavor thing. It's not an actual cold effect, but. Uh, very melty, but it still has like a little bite to it. Next up, we've got cake. Cake roll with raspberry filling. France practically invented dessert. No, really. The word dessert comes from the French desservir. Desservir? Desservir meaning to clear the table. And rest assured, when it comes to France's world-renowned desserts, there's never any problem clearing the table. These delectable raspberry swirl cakes are first-hand proof. Instantly, you'll get a fragrant whiff of real French raspberries. I do notice it's not super filled with the raspberry, which no. I appreciate, because right. if it was too much raspberry. It smells, I can smell yeah. it. Well, cheers. Well, 
and I'm glad there's not there's not too much raspberry in, in here. You know what this <clears> tastes <throat> like? Have you tried a fig Newton? Oh yeah. But like not fig. Not, you're right. But the t this flavor of a the little bit the types of the thing around it. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's decent. Yeah, it's fine. It's nothing like out of this world that I've never tried before. But it does remind me of fig Newtons. So. Yeah, if the raspberry was stronger, it wouldn't it wouldn't be too good. Right. If it was too like raspberry syrupy, then that would have kind of ruined it. And this came in like a little box that looks like animal crackers. This reminds me of like animal yeah. cracker boxes. Mm -hmm. Butter biscuits. It's called Les Les Sables de la Mer Polar. Probably said that all wrong. Watch out. The main ingredient in this famous French shortbread is sand. <laughs> what? But this delicious sand. Sable, sables are centuries old cookies made by rubbing cold butter into flour and sugar to form tiny particles of dough. Given the dough's striking resemblance to sand, okay. these fine golden breadcrumbs came to be sable, the French word for sand. So yes, these electable cookies are made with sand, but we're talking the very buttery and very edible kind, not the kind you find on the beaches of the French Riviera. Woo! Okay, good to know. It's not actual sand. Oh, they're so cute. Oh. I want to have coffee and eat these. <laughs> we definitely have to save them. A little tea party. Yeah, these are like little tea biscuit style looking things. Oh, and they smell like that blue can. The blue can of cookies. Yep. I forgot what they're called, but I'll, I'll start a picture. But those blue can of cookies. Okay, well, cheers. And they taste just like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, are those, where are those cookies from, that blue can? It's not from France, right? I don't think so. That would be funny if it is. But it tastes like the same exact thing. I think they're Danish. Okay. Next up, chips again. But these are vinegar potato chips called Sibel Chips Sevior Vinagre. Okay. I think. Vinagre. Bordeaux is. Or Bordeaux. Bordeaux yeah. <laughs> is famous for its vineyards. Paris is famous for its high end restaurants. But what about the city of Orleans, lying directly between the two? Hint look at these chips. Yeah, it's famous for vinegar. Between the 13th and 17th centuries, countless barrels of wine would go sour on its way from Bordeaux to Paris. Or Bordeaux. <laughs> Rather than take the loss, savvy merchants in Orleans sold the spoiled wine as vinegar. Hence the name vinegar from the French vinaigre. Vin 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 meaning sour wine. Today, Orleans vinegar is used across France for everything from cleaning supplies to vinaigrettes to perfect, crunchy, delightfully tangy potato chips like these. And you've got to admit, vinegar chips sounds better than sour wine chips. I guess I never really thought about <clears throat> no, the fact. No, I didn't realize that either. Yeah, that vinegar is sour wine. Right. Oh, I smell vinegar. Wow. These look like Lay's chips. And Lay's does have a salt and vinegar flavor, so this right. might just taste like that. Well, let's we'll see. see. Cheers. That's vinegar. Very vinegar. But. Is this like Lay's? Tastes just like Lay's. Less salt maybe? Than yeah, Lay's? it has less salt. There's no salt in it. Well, okay. there's salt, but barely. Right. Compared to the Lay's one. It's, it's, it's nice. Mm. We've got one more snack before it goes into candy. Mm. So now we're going to try cheese flavored tube snacks. Seabell. Oh, the same company as the oh, okay. chips. Seabell. Seabell? Tube agregnoter fromage. I'm learning that fromage is cheese. Omelette de fromage. We have shocking news. Are you sitting down? <laughs> okay, here it goes. In France, people don't really snack. Gasp. We know, we know. Sounds crazy, right? But let's be clear. The French still enjoy munching on chips, crisps, and crackers. They just save them for a pre-dinner course called the apéritif. We know about apéritifs. Yeah. Except in drinking. Little and drinking. And drinking style. During the starter course, French folks gather for a casual conversation, a glass of wine, and a savory snack designed to whet appetites for the meal to come. Feel free to do as the French do and save the snack for the right before dinner. Just be extra careful not to spoil the main course. Well, not we're not today. doing that. Oh, wow. That smells like cheese. Way more than the first chip. Yeah. And the, the style, the way Never it looks. Never seen anything like this. No. Yeah. Like Fritos, but if Fritos were like puffed. Cause Fritos also, are- Also, kind of looks like a uh, gnocchi pasta. Oh, kind of looks like a gnocchi. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, there's a cheese. That tastes like cheese. That's what the first chip sort of tasted right. like. Right. Well- That reminds me of something. Yeah. The popcorn, cheddar popcorn. 
No, this tastes almost like Frito-y. Really? If okay, Fritos did not have its Frito seasoning, yep. then it would taste like this, but with cheese. It's closer to Fritos, yeah. And more puffed, because Fritos are not puffed, they're like flat. They're more crispy. Crispy. I they're fun? Them. They're fun. I don't know if um, this is good before dinner. I don't know, why would you eat this before dinner? Yeah. Out of the three chip options, what would you pick? Ooh, the vinegar. The vinegar? Yeah. This is second place. I might pick these. I mean, these are just as good, but they're just not a. But at least these are totally not a different. tasty, funny adventure. All right, so on to candy, our least favorite part. Yeah. Sometimes it could be good. <coughs> these are called tetes brulees. It's tropical peach tea and cola flavored chews with sour filling. What? Cola flavor. Tropical peach tea and cola flavored oh. chews with sour filling. Why Very are you calling this a brulee? Consider yourself warned. This super sweet is about to blow your mind. No, we're not being dramatic. This candy's name, Tetes Brulees, literally translates to burnt heads. Don't worry, they won't actually set your head on fire, but they're extremely sour filling. It's much more intense than the sour candies you're probably used to. We're looking at you, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> Pop one in your mouth and decide for yourself. Are we being dramatic or do these sour candies live up to their mind-blowing name? Really, the most sour candy is Warheads. Warheads, yeah. I didn't say that. So if it's like Warheads, then... If it's more than Warheads, I'll be surprised. That's when I'll be mind-blown. Cheers. Oh, you can buy that one. Yeah, it's soft. Uh-oh. It is sour. It is like a Warhead where there's like... That gummy middle. It's very floral, too. Maybe that's the tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do taste the tea. Peach tea is the, the strongest flavor. Mm-hmm. It was sour, but warheads are way sour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's gonna get stuck. Now it's all tea. stuck in there. <laughs> no trip to France is complete without a visit or two or three to the local bonbon shop. Bonbon is the French word for candy, literally translating to good good. That extra <laughs> good name couldn't be more fitting for this scrumptious selection of French sweets. Our advice? Savor them because in the blink of an eye, these bonbons will be gone gone. <laughs> okay. Well, we got one more candy left. One more good good. Now this one might be more our style. This is salted butter caramels. Caramels con fleur de cid. Salt. Salted caramel is classic, right? Considering its popularity, you might think so. But the flavor is less than 50 years old. It was only in 1977 that French confectioner Henri Le Rox set out to make a new candy using the famous sea salted butter from the Brittany region. After three months of experimentation, he debuted his salted butter caramel and it was an instant hit. By 1980, it was voted the country's best candy. By 2008, it had gone totally mainstream, with both Haagen-Dazs and Starbucks debuting salted caramel products. With this bonbon, you'll taste the salted caramel that started it all, and find out for yourself why this French flavor is here to stay. Hmm. I do like salted caramel things. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna like the sticky... I know, it's just the texture of stickiness of right. the candy, but well, we'll get see. past it. Yeah, I guess stuff in your teeth like crazy. No, this is not fun. I don't taste the salt. I taste the caramel. That's not fun. I think I did taste a little tiny hint of salt. That was not worth it. That was not worth getting all sticky teeth. Okay, so time to make the vote for the Yum Awards. Okay. We've got to vote for best, second best, worst, and the weirdest. Right. So what's worst? The worst that. was that thing. Okay. How yeah. about weirdest? Um, there was that, nothing really weird about this box. Right, everything we can compare to something else. Right. Okay, let's go for best. Alright, best is the chocolate. Okay, second best. I like the vinegar chips a lot. I like these. But I would go with that one. Yeah, these uh, just because, two things. Just because they're different. So weirdest would go for... Uh, I don't know, I guess these candies, the sour candies, were kind of weird because they had like a peach tea flavor. Sure, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you guys comment down below, tell us what you think was the weirdest, because that's always the hardest one to pick Usually. every box, right? Most times. There are a lot of common things with the word French in the name, but are they really French? Let's see which of the four everyday things are really French. French Bulldog. You think that's actually French? Yes. Half French. Huh. The ancestors of these cute pups lived in England. 
where they were owned by lace workers. When the workers moved to France in the 1800s, their dogs bred with local breeds, and the French bulldog was born. So it's half French. Okay. All right, next. French toast. French. Think it's French? Yeah. It's not. No? Though it's eaten in France under the name uh, pan, pan perdu. Pan perdu. Lost bread. French toast actually dates back to the 4th century in Rome. Hey, what? That's pretty cool. All right. French horn. Um, French. It's not. No? <laughs> this brass instrument was invented in Germany in 1818, mm. but to be fair, it was modified with the French valves in 1839. All right, last one, French vanilla ice cream. Not French. It is, it is French. French. <laughs> it's the one that's actually French. This especially fragrant flavor is rooted in the French tradition of making vanilla custard. The more you know. Okay, so vanilla ice cream is not French, but French vanilla ice cream is French. Well, French vanilla flavor. That's a specific flavor. Is a specific. It's not yeah. vanilla. No, vanilla is. Okay. I, is like just a. Is I a see. Yeah, I guess I don't know. Right. Let's see what the clue to the next month's box is, and I can already see it's tropical related, based off of the picture here with little palm trees. Hey. Next month, an expedition is in store, down the Rio. Okay. We'll search from shore to shore. Not for critters, for something even more rare. Chilies, passion fruit, and yums beyond compare. Well, they said Rio. They said Rio, which... So there's Rio Brazil. Uh-huh, I think it's Brazil, right? And there's also Rio Grande. And that's like a river that goes through oh. Mexico, but that's not Mexico. No, that it has, stuff? this has to be Brazil. Yeah. What do you guys think? Is All it right. Brazil? Brazil next month. That'll be fun. Thank you for watching another Universal Yums unboxing and trying snacks with us. And uh, what do you think your favorite snack would have been? If you're interested in trying the box yourself, I'll leave the link down below in the description. And you should definitely try it because it's fun. And we're not sponsored, but maybe one day we will. <laughs> but at least if we ever do get sponsored, you'll know that we truly love the product and that we're not just doing it for the money or anything. It's because we actually really enjoy it and we would continue doing it anyways. So, toodaloo! toodaloo.